Now back to high school sports talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. Presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Here's Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. Oh, I love it. It's Baby Shark, my favorite. My uh, niece was loving that yesterday as I think I just blew Ed's ears out. Uh, we are back here from Virginia Wesleyan Team Camp. I don't know what was worse. You either blew my ear out or that crazy baby shark. What, uh, Thomas, what are you doing back in the studio? We love baby shark. Thomas usually does a top-notch job, but he I, played baby I shark. Him. I asked Coach, him that, asked baby shark. Oh, my God. I don't taking, want that to get in my head. Taking the world by storm. And someone else that knows about baby shark, he's our next guest. He is the head basketball coach of the Grafton Clippers. I don't. I apologize. I don't have your, your career record in front of me, but he's one of the best in the state and the area. Jeremy Jordan, who you can follow on Twitter at the Mortgage Man here as Team 4-0 at the Virginia Wesleyan Team Camp. Coach, thank you for stopping by. Thanks, Matt and Ed. Good morning. Here's the first and most important question. And we'll tackle Baby Shark, too. But uh, you are on Twitter at the Mortgage Man. Our last coach, Yogi Edwards of Lake Terror, he's on Twitter. Trevor Dorsey of Peninsula Catholic is on Twitter. Now, you are known as the Mortgage Man, so you are very well-versed in mortgage and finances, and including Coach Ed Young's. Yes. Give Coach Ed Young the pros and cons to why he should or should not get on Twitter. Oh, man. Um, I tell you, with this day and age, you know, the, the kids, um, they want to – there's so much uh, in terms of PR uh, for the kids and trying to get their names out there. And, you know, that's really the kind of platform that I use it for specifically is just, you know, trying to help um, our guys, you know, get a layup and um, make a couple connections with college coaches along along the way. And, you know, one of our – we've got a pretty strict uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook policy at Grafton, like, during the season. And, you know, I, I, my thing is I better not see any tweets or anything about individual accolades after a loss. I mean, you know, this day and age there's so much um, emphasis on scoring the basketball and things like that. But, you know, if, if we lose a basketball game, I, I better not see anything on, you know, individual uh, accomplishments because, you know, if, if the team doesn't win, we don't win. So, uh, again, I don't think anybody benefits from that. So the shortcut to that long question with the answer, should he get one yes or no, he should not? I think he needs one, and I think ah, I think, I think we need to add that face app uh, oh. you know, <laughs> picture. You've seen that. Uh-oh. I'm in real deep doo-doo. I'm just going to move closer to Al and away from you guys. Uh, Ed, your questions. I'm done now. The Rick Pitino uh, app one, Ed. I'll I take that one. Yeah. Now, that social media stuff, uh, you know, I don't see a need for, for me personally right now to be on Twitter. Um, you're right, Jeremy. It's, it's good PR for the kids, contact the college coach and that. I, I still do the old-fashioned way. I call people if I have somebody to sell, so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, we still do it. We all, we all, again, it's like winning. We all have our methods to get there. The key is to get there. And that's I don't right. begrudge anybody that's on it. Now, I will say this, and I'm with you on the social media with the kids. But one of the biggest issues with kids nowadays, they think they can do whatever they want. That's right. Say whatever they want on social media. <clears throat> don't realize... Those college coaches, those other people, let alone law enforcement, are watching that kind of stuff, and no that question. can be extremely detrimental to your future endeavors. And, I, and I've I've told you know our players this uh, for many many years now. You know, I've never had a college coach ask me how many points a kid averages. You know, yeah, um, good point. And, and you know what? I mean, it just gets overlooked in some capacity, but you know, with just kind of the way and the style that we play, and you know, uh, our kids maybe aren't going to lead the league in scoring and. You know, we just have to accept that and embrace that. And, you know, our guys have to buy into playing a certain way. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that's that's made us so successful this weekend in particular is, you know, coming back from Richmond team camp and, you know, playing a lot of really good, you know, competitive teams from Northern Virginia. And um, it's been good to watch our growth and development over the course of the past couple of weeks. So, um, I, you know, I'm really excited to finish out the summer with these guys and, you know, get going into the fall season and then, you know, then the winter the winter grind starts. Well, for those that haven't seen your team play, we're chatting with Jeremy Jordan, head basketball coach of the Grafton Clippers, our guest here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1, live from the 19th annual Blue Marlin basketball team camp. Tell us, A, about that style of play. I know you guys have used some pack line on defense and then the offensive principles, and then morph into some of the key guys for you, what they bring to the table. I know your backcourt last night, very impressive with Terry White and Landon Stutt leading the way. Yeah, no question. Um, I mean, our staple, and Ed knows that, I mean, we've, we've built our program around the pack line defense. It's, you know, for anybody that knows the game or doesn't know what pack line means, it's 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 basically the defensive philosophy that Tony Bennett uses at Virginia. Um, and our, our programs are run probably very similar in terms of, you know, our approach to the day in and day out, um, you know, activities that we do. And, 
you know, the leadership things that we try to bring to the table. And, um, you know, because at the end of the day that, you know, for, for a lot of these kids that are even out here today, you know, after four years and, you know, their high school careers come to an end, most of them it's over. You know, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're picking up to play an adult rec league down the road. But, you know, there's just so much more, you know, to me coaching high school basketball and, you know, than, than just trying to win games. We've been fortunate enough to win a ton of games in my 10 years, and um, we hope to continue that, you know, with year 11. And, um, you know, I like the makeup of our team right now, guys. And, um, you know, we're not going to wow you in any way, shape, or form. You know, we don't have a tremendous amount of size. We don't have a tremendous amount of athletes. You know, we just kind of are who we are right now. And, you know, our team's really taken over that, you know, the Virginia Tech football, the lunch pail philosophy, or just kind of blue-collar work ethic. And, you know, I've been trying to instill it on in our guys, you know, uh, over the course of the past couple weeks that in high school basketball you can win a tremendous amount of games by just outworking and out competing and out, you know, just trying to do the little things it takes to win basketball games. And, um, you know, three out of the four games have been tightly contested. And, you know, we've been fortunate. And it's different when the season comes along. But, you know, to beat to beat Kellum and, uh, you know, beat Potomac in overtime and came from behind last night in that game and really to beat another great uh, great bridge team this morning um, and then just, you know, just beating Grassfield. So we're really happy to be 4-0 right now. And, um, you know, we've got Cox coming up at noon and, you know, maybe we'll try to finish 5-0 and, and, and go into the tournament tomorrow and try to make a little noise. And Cox, the team that won a region title as recent as two seasons ago, got a good guard back in Jordan Lewis at the point and Grafton not just rallying to beat the likes of Kellum and Kikatan, but doing so from 12 points and 14 points down. Grafton coach Jeremy Jordan, our guest here on High School Sports Talk, brought to you by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1 from the Virginia Wesleyan team camp. And you said something very interesting, Coach, and I'm sure Ed will jump in here. And I had this discussion last night uh, off air. We also had Keith Henry on air from Potomac, and some other coaches have discussed this about shot clock in high school basketball. And you just said it's something that really hit, struck a chord with me. It's something I've been a proponent of because I see both sides of the argument, not to be on the fence with it. My, my philosophy has been not every kid's going to play college basketball. So let's Correct. not make this game college basketball. Same for college basketball, the NBA. And I know Ed, I believe, is one who's in favor of keeping it as it is. But I've also heard and seen that if we have a shot clock, it could improve the level of play. My thing is let's not do it for the purposes of this will get our kids to college because this is high school basketball. My thing has been let's have a study. Do this in the summer with and without. Show me the, statistics, the stats, the data that says – this is what it is with. This is what it's without. What, what's your take on it? Does the game need a shot clock, and does it not need a shot clock? Keep it as is. Listen, I, I, I don't think the high school game's broken. Um, okay. uh, you know, I, I don't think we need a shot clock. Obviously, that plays into a little bit of our advantage because we are more of a tempo-oriented sure. team. And you know, but I'm looking at the big picture now. If I'm, you know. My, my buddy, Coach McLoon at IMG Academy, who's a good friend of mine. And, you know, if I'm coaching high-level elite kids, you know, in that type of setting and, you know, it's, you know, we're at the Oak Hill Nationals, uh, I mean, uh, the Dick Sporting Good Nationals sure. or something like that, um, or even the WCAC. I mean, th- there are there are different leagues and different um, levels where, you know, look, I think it's probably a good idea to have that implemented. You know, but does, does every high school, you know, single-A, double-A, triple-A or – I guess one, one through six, eight now. But you know, do we need to implement a shot clock? I think the answer is no. I think you're going to have more bad possessions. I think you're going to have more four shots. And um, you know, again, it's. I, I don't think it's broken in that capacity. I think we need to stay, you know, right where we are right now. And, and like I said, maybe mix it in. You know, the higher level you get. That's 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 been my stance with it. Well, as I bring that into it, I mean, I think if you put 24 or 30, that'd be a huge mistake. First of all, that's a big issue. Right. Coach Honoré was talking about. It. If you did 35, that could maybe pass by because a lot of teams get a shot off within 35 seconds. But Ed, the other thing that people don't talk about is the cost of actually getting one into all the schools. That's, right. that's something that's going to be very difficult to happen. I think that's what people are failing to realize. It, it's hard for us to find people to run a regular game clock. Now you got to find somebody else to run a shot clock, understand right. when to reset, when not to reset, when it's touched, not touched. On a fi- It's not needed. I agree with Jeremy. Right. Shot clock is not needed at our level. That used to come into play a lot of times. Back in the day, you had a lot of low-scoring games. You might have a team that's not talented hold the ball right. uh, against a team. I remember years ago in Norview, we held the ball. I think we took 17 shots, 21 shots. Beat Hampton, right? Beat Hampton. Well, uh, Jabari hasn't talked to you since. No, he has talked to you yeah. since. <laughs> we beat them because we didn't have the talent they had. I had suspended three kids for missing um, an early season, early morning practice. And, and we just didn't have – we couldn't run with them. It would have been ridiculous. So we held the ball. I, I don't know how we did it, but it worked. The kids listened. It's awesome. And we won. But I don't think that's – even that's a need because – 
in high school especially, you've got to put your team in a situation. What's the best we can do to win a game? So right. just hold the ball, you hold the ball. College and pro level, you really don't hold the ball because of shot clock. And more importantly, the pro and college level is entertainment. People or fans are paying. There's advertisers. We don't have all that in the high school. Yeah, we have fans, and they're paying to watch the game. Right. We don't have all these advertisers that want to speed up the game and whatever. It's not needed. I kind of agree with Jeremy, too, that you could get in a situation, kids worry about a clock and take jack-up shots from all over. We already have an outside game to begin with. We've eliminated the inside post. We're trying to do this open-up type basketball that was somewhat started by the Warriors. But in all technicalities, it's been started when basketball was invented. Nothing nothing new is new. It's, right. it's just recycled. But I don't think we need a shot. No, and, I, you know, the thing is, like I said, if you can have statistical data that supports the <laughs> argument for it, I'd be more open to it as opposed to this saying we need it. I don't know that. And doing 24 or 30, you, you really have people starting to rush and pay attention to it. Because, really, if you just showed the actual data of people, you, most people get a shot off within 35 seconds of a possession. That's right. So, talking with Jeremy Jordan, head basketball coach of the Grafton Clippers here on ESPN Radio 94.1. It's high school sports talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Two more minutes left here as we have the 19th annual Blue Marlin team camp. A new set of games getting ready to get going here with Grafton playing Cox at noon here. Great Bridge versus Princess Anna Court 1 and Lake Taylor Minchville Court 3. Last moment because I know you got a game coming up here. Um, what are you looking for out of this camp as you move forward into the fall and the winter? And uh, got many multi-sport athletes on your roster at Grafton? We don't have a uh, we don't have a tremendous amount of multi-sport kids uh, this particular year. Um, so we do have some kids that are, you know, pretty much dialed in and focusing on basketball right now. Uh, the biggest thing for me is we've got 12 or 13 guys out there out here this weekend, and you know a lot of them are, are, are eighth graders and freshmen right now. So uh, half the lineup is for the most part. So they're just on the bench. Uh, they're getting a little bit of time, but they're just on the bench, kind of learning and you know listening to me up and down the sideline a little bit and. Um, you know, watching our approach of some of our main guys and, um, you know, guys like Terry White, Landon Studd, Josiah Moore, um, Andrew Boggs, Cole George, um, they're just kind of watching them get out there and compete. And um, I think they're learning a tremendous amount from that right now. So, you know, for me, it's just a progression, just try to get better each and every day. And, you know, we, we just got to keep continuing to play hard and trying to get better. And um, there's some things that will work out by the time we get into practice and, you know, get behind closed doors for two, two and a half, three hours at a time. But, you know, for now, it's just all about going out here, playing hard, playing together and competing. Um, and then everything else will come. So, uh, you know, I've never been a big proponent of wins and losses in the summer. Um, but, you know, ha- having the ability to win a couple close games here this weekend, I think can, you know, prove itself to kind of, you know, pay some dividends, uh, hopefully by the time the season starts. But, um yeah, uh, you know, and how about this facility? You know that oh, that, that, uh, that that Coach Masita, uh, we, we've Coach Masita and I have been good friends for about fourteen or fifteen years. I I was at Randolph Macon with Mike Rhodes at the time, so we had a lot of battles here at the Fish Tank. Uh, you know, coaching against him, and you know, seeing guys like Brandon Adair and some of those older other guys coming back, and um, you know, Coach Masita is very similar to uh, what Coach Rhodes built at Randolph Macon. It's a you know, it's a family here at, at Wesleyan, and. I see the court's already named by, you know, Donald Forsyth Court, but, man, it, it, Coach Macedo Court, is uh, they need to add that to the mix at some point because everywhere you look in this gym, it's a, it's, a, it's a men's basketball banner hung up on the wall, and, you know, they've had a tremendous amount of success, and, you know, Coach Macedo and his staff do it the right way, and, you know, we're very fortunate to have such a quality Division three program here locally for some of our local kids to take advantage of. So, um, you know, great hospitality, hospitality by Coach Macedo and his staff. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. He's done a fantastic job here. I think people don't – it's sort of like when you're watching greatness in the NFL or NBA or Major League Baseball, you're watching that Hall of Famer before your eyes. I don't think you really appreciate it until it's gone or something That's right. like that. That's gone. Right. And you mentioned Mike Roach is a good friend of ours. We've had him here on High School Sports Talk, also on the 757 at 6 weeknights here on ESPN Radio 94.1. We watched his son last night. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mills Godwin, number I, 15. I know. So we played at 8 o'clock, and then the 9 o'clock game was, uh, you know, Mills Godwin came on. So I had a front row seat, and I was actually texting Coach last night and um, you know just how you know I really thought Logan was coming along and you know he's going to be a really good player for Godwin uh, for the future so um, you know reminds me so much of uh, I mean you know when I was at Randolph making Logan was 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 a baby um, so uh, you know wow. to sit in the stands and, and, and he was a little bit older than a baby but to sit in the stands and get to watch him play high school basketball now is pretty exciting for me last night I wonder if he can take a charge it always talks about when you were at his clinic and taking that charge I wonder if he can take a charge like his dad <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. I'm yes. sure he can. We, 
you know, he preaches it, that's for sure. Well, when, when Mike was an assistant under um, Shaka at VCU, a lot of the coaches were involved in the drills. And Mike led the practice and charges taken. Uh, unbelievable. I love it. I love it. And he was taking them against the college kids at two, well, 260, the big kid uh, playing NFL football now. Uh, Mo oh, Cox. Molly Cox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking I'm of that particular story, it's 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 our it's our charge drill that we you know we used to run at Randolph Macon all the time, and you know that particular charge drill in the first week of practice when we get to Saturday morning, we always practice that last Saturday uh, in the first week of season. That Saturday, we always get in the gym at seven o'clock in the morning. Well, by about seven o five, we do the we do that charge drill, and that, and and very similar to Mike, I always usually take the first charge <laughs> of that practice at seven o five, and you know it gets the guys fired up. You know, and after you know, it's the sixth day of a just an awfully difficult first week of the season for us. So, it try you know if if it gives them our guys a little extra energy, then you know uh, it usually makes the rest of that three-hour practice go well. Well, you're getting ready to tip. So yep, thank yep. you so much. Thanks, if you guys. See, uh, Coach Jordan without a uh, tooth, you'll know why he took the charge. Coach. I hope I don't lose any teeth, <laughs> uh, man. I tell you. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys. That's the luck luck, Jeremy. weekend. Jeremy Jordan, our guest here on High School Sports Talk, brought to you by VirginiaPreps.com. As the Clippers are literally getting to tip off. Uh, as we speak, they got to hold the game up for Jeremy down, down the, court the steps. Here to come down the steps and uh, lead his team. He hopes to victory over the Cox Falcons. They are very pesky. Bobby Wolf does a great job as well over there uh, with that Virginia Beach program. As we got Cox and Grafton on court two, we got Lake Tedder, Titan Nation out here getting ready to play on court three against uh, the Menchville Monarchs. Uh, see Lamont Strutters over there. His son, Allen, I believe, is here as well. Yeah, the point guard who Old Dominion, among others, has offered. He's wearing number five if you come out here to see Menchville uh, today or this weekend. And then on court one in front of us, Princess San playing. Who are they playing yet? Is it uh, Great Bridge? Great, yeah, Bridge? Great Bridge. You'll see a good backcourt matchup here. Number five, uh, A.J. Walters. Number three, that's uh, Sterling White for Great Bridge. A couple of uh, all-district candidates. And then for Princeton, the big man, Isaiah Roberts on the inside. He's got the hair, the uh, ponytail. I think he's wearing number 50. I can't tell. And then the point guard, Kanye Clary, who's wearing, is that 55? Uh, you'll notice him, though. He is a very... A uh, talented point guard who's a rising sophomore from Princess Anne, a second-team all-region player. And uh, Zay Roberts, a guy that's been a football basketball standout for PA, uh, playing in the post, had that double-double in their close regional playoff loss to Green Run. So you'll see uh, plenty of talent, some next-level guys here on the floor throughout the day and the weekend at Virginia Wesleyan Team Camp. Who do you play, Coach Young? I know we mentioned earlier you got Green Run at 4 o'clock. You have Thomas Edison, I think, on tap as well. Uh, 7 o'clock we play, and 9 o'clock, whoever they are. So uh, if you want to see Coach Young's Warriors, Court 3, 4 o'clock against Green Run. Court 3, 7 o'clock against Thomas Edison out of Alexandria. Oh, by the way, Jared Clawson, watch out for him wearing number one. He dropped seven three-pointers in our Virginia Preps Classic last year with 36 points. Nearly a uh, event record, the second most all-time in a 12-year history of the event. And then your 9 o'clock game against Coach Rhodes' son and Mills Godwin, led by Jacob Oliver, who coached a couple years back at Meadowbrook High School as well. And, uh, folks, if they go 3-0, and Ed Young's buying. So you get that Noah, you get that Al, Ed Young's buying. Free food for everybody if they go 3-0 and because he always says, you got to go 3-0, and and then I will treat anybody that comes. Anybody that comes to Virginia Wesleyan. So find him if they win all three games, and at 9 o'clock, They'll form a little line right here outside the concession stand, and he'll have to buy everybody Snickers bars, candy bars, soda, uh, pizza. has got to be a limit. You get that, Thomas. Limit. If you come out here at 9, if he's 3-0, and oh, now if they lose the first game, you get, I mean, you still come by, but you can forget about Ed Young buying anything. I mean, he's so cheap, he won't buy it much anyway. You have to you have to put his feet to the fire with something like this anyway. So. Yeah, I don't know. 3-0, uh, and oh, I'm buying. 3-0, and oh, you're buying. Ooh, what do I want? i got to see. I gotta see what do I want. I'm hungry. We got like 60 seconds left. If that, Ed, anything else on your mind here this weekend before we uh, say toodaloo? No. Um, like I said, people out there that want to see some basketball, but this is the time to come and see it. A lot of teams from different all different areas. A lot of younger kids. They're not charging admission, are they? No, it's free. It's free to see all this basketball action. It's free. Stop in a little bit. Um, you know, maybe just stay, for, watch one set of games. You can see three games at a time right here. And I'm telling you, there's a ton of teams here that will be in the playoffs. And I'm going to make this prediction. Oh, no. Don't, that better not be about weather. No, it's going to be sunny today. But it's in sunny. this team camp right now, we have two teams that will be playing for a state championship in their respective uh, areas. Playing for a state championship. Yeah, I'm not going to say they'll automatically win. That's, That's not a win. bold declaration like winning a state championship. Well, one of the two will win. How about that? I have my, my thinking who it is, too. You have your thinking? Can you give me a hint what division nope. you're thinking? Nope. I, my sources are close to me. Your sources are close to you? Yep. 
All right, well, that's going to do it for High School Sports Talk. We thank all our guests this morning, Jeremy Jordan of the Grafton Clippers, Derek Yogi Edwards from the Lake Taylor Titans, Trevor Dorsey of the Peninsula Catholic Knights. Can't forget about head coach Dave Macedo of the Virginia Wesleyan Marlins as well. And Tommy Riemann, you heard the playback with him from Lansdowne High, head football coach in Virginia Beach. If you missed any of this show, you can find it in the coming days on virginiapreps.com. Go to the replay section. And if you missed any of the 757 at 6 last night, it's on our ESPN Radio 941.com podcast page with uh, Dwight Robinson of Lansdowne Basketball and Keith Honore of Potomac. As always, you can find us on Twitter, too, at HS Sports Talk 941, HS Sports Talk 941. want to thank all the hardworking people uh, behind the scenes, from uh, Thomas in our Virginia Beach studios to Noah and Al and Jimmy. I'm Matt Hatfield. You, sir, are? I'm the coach, Edia. Can you believe next weekend will be August? Oh, my God. That tells me school is on the way it is on the way summer is uh nearing a conclusion so enjoy it while it lasts the last few weeks of summer we got football coming too that'll do it for high school sports talk thanks for listening to your home for sport throughout the commonwealth of virginia it is espn radio 94.1